Yes, I don't know whether she is. Her picture's there, Francis, but I'm not sure if she's there. You mean her, her photograph? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll wait for her to confirm she's there, Francis, before we continue. Okay. Okay. So sorry, everybody. My, I had to be charging. I'm using the iPad and I have to charge it, but the, where I am and the charger are not co-located, so I have enough juice to get going anyway now. Good. Thank you very much, Anne-Marie. Sorry about that. That's all right. No problem. Um, Nasa, could you confirm are we on YouTube now streaming? Yes, we are. I can see that at the top. Thank you. Um, we are in the process of the determination of the findings of fact. We have heard from the investigations officer and questions are being asked from them and we're at the point now where um, the member and or their representative will, will make their representations. So I ask you to take that forward, please. Francis. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I think that's going to be me. Um, yeah. I just want to quickly uh, refer to a couple of points that uh, Simon Rocha made uh, before lunch. Um, and he, he said that one of the, the key factors for him that he thought about was why would an officer make it up? And we're not suggesting that this complaint is made up or, um, or not. Uh, and then you talk about the um, evidence from uh, a contractor, uh, an independent contractor is what you said, but you know we, we've kind of gone over that a little bit. Um, so we're not suggesting and we don't think that that should be in the forefront of the panel's minds. There's no suggestion that anybody's making anything up, but I, I hope by the time I get to the end of my a little lengthy presentation that you will understand where we're coming from um, in relation to how some people can remember something, some people can't, and what to make of that mix. Mm -hmm. So um, if I may, I'll begin. <clears throat> um, the first paragraph 4.9 of your covering report. I mean, I say the first because when I was checking to make sure I had everything in place, there are three. There are three paragraph 4.9s in the, um, the covering report, but you know, it's, it's not too problematic. Apart from to say at 4.9, it says the standards meeting will need to decide whether or not the facts are set out in paragraphs 189 to 192 are established on the balance of probabilities. Etc. Um, Francis, could I just briefly, sorry, interrupt you? Yes. Um, if anything um, that you're about to share with us contains information or reference to a particular individual who is not present here on the Zoom meeting, um, we would need to move into private session. So um, just let us know if that's the case or if you think we should do that now. Um, no. Okay. Um, fine, thank you. I just just to make it clear. Thank you. Thank you. So, can you just say that again? If I refer to any, if you if you if if in your submissions you're involving information data about another individual, right, um, who is not present here, okay, um, in in this in the Zoom session, then we would need to move into private session. Okay. Um, as opposed to being on YouTube. So if if you think that's going to be the case, um, you might want to just give what, what you want to say. You have the choice to go to that straight away or later on when it becomes relevant, if it becomes relevant. Yeah, I presumably I can refer to the complainant. Um, she's not in the Zoom meeting, but she's referred to in the complaint. Yeah. Um, can I just and take advice from John on that? I can refer to I can refer to the evidence in the bundle because that's in the public yes. domain. Yes. Chair, if it helps, I, I think uh, per perfectly okay to refer to evidence that's in the bundle. It's if uh, you know, as 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 was discussed in private session earlier, we start getting on to uh, issues that aren't in the bundle. 
or are about uh, individuals that obviously haven't had the right to come and, uh, and reply on those issues, that we would uh, request that you let us know and give the committee the opportunity to go into exempt. Okay. Um... How about if I start, and then if I feel that we're getting onto difficult territory? Yes. Then we will. Then we will move. Then that's fine. Yeah. And if if we think you are and you haven't flagged up, then I will shout in. Okay. All right. Um, we'll get we'll get there together. Don't worry. Thank you. Um, and um, can I just say that, given that this is. A very strange scenario for me. I've not done a Zoom hearing before. I've done a couple of Zoom meetings before, which I'm finding it very difficult not to feel like I'm in a, a fishbowl and it's all water and all the words are getting all um, mixed up. And the delay I find really disconcerting. I feel when I'm speaking to Simon Gulter, he seems like he's in South America because it's all very delayed. <laughs> so um, forgive me. Um, and also forgive me because I'm going to say rather a lot. And I know I've got the graveyard slot after lunch, but I hope you didn't eat too well at lunchtime and I don't help you to nod off. Um, okay, so when I just referred then to the covering report, it was re referring to that the facts in paragraphs 189 to 192 of Simon Gulch's report are established on the balance of probabilities. But that's a brief summary of the alleged facts. And my job today is to provide the most important context to the bare bones of this story. And because Anne-Marie is very clear that she did not say pipe down to anyone at that training session. And she hmm, told the leader the very next day, um, that she hadn't said that. I want to tell you the facts as we see them. But before I do that, I need to say something about the burden of proof, which is not, as I'm sure you all know, as in criminal cases, beyond reasonable doubt, but as in civil cases, it's on the balance of probabilities. And here is my problem, and Councillor Cousins' problem. It's almost impossible to prove a negative unless Anne-Marie simply wasn't at the training session or the whole of the training session was recorded and we had a verbatim transcript, but we don't. I think you'll agree that the phrase, I don't recall her saying that, has to be a weaker statement than she definitely said that. And that's because no one can say in this case, I heard every word that everyone said no one has perfect recall. And we get the impression when you read the, the versions of what happened at that training session, that a lot of the time people were talking above one another and across one another. And this means, unfortunately, that Councillor Cousins' case has an undeniable built-in weakness. So even though she is absolutely certain she did not say pipe down to Henrietta Cortano, or anyone else for that matter. All she's got here before you as a panel is the, we can only call them negative testimonies. For example, I don't recall, I didn't hear her say that. She's got her integrity and she's got, we hope, the benefit of the doubt. You're asked to decide on supposedly simple facts. And I'll come to that later on the balance of probabilities. And it can feel like a light touch decision, but please consider all the factors I put before you this morning. It was gonna be this morning, but now it's this afternoon. Um, because if you do find she did say it, and I hope you don't, and you conclude that she's breached the code of conduct, the consequences for her can be severe. She can be removed from any committee. She can even be banned from council buildings according to your procedures. But much more importantly, her reputation will be damaged forever. In my view, there is a lot of confusion in the investigator's report. 
what is she supposed to have said? We've got pipe down or shut up or even piping up at one point. To whom did she say it? And no one seems to be able to agree when she said it. So you've got an awful lot to weigh up. So I ask you on Councillor Cousins' behalf, because there is an awful lot at stake here, for you to make your decisions on the facts with great care. No doubt John Scarborough will advise you, but in this point, the panel are simply deciding, did Councillor X say something, say X, sorry, or something similar? You are not deciding in this part of the meeting whether she said it in a dismissive way or not. That's for the second half of the hearing when you consider whether she's breached the code of conduct. So what are the facts of this case? Please remember when you're thinking about this, that there were 14 people in the room that day on the 15th of April. And quite a few of them have changed their stories between the 15th of April and four months later when they were interviewed round about August, 2019. The first, I'm calling her the player in the drama, and that's, that's no disrespect, but just the, the first, let's say the protagonist, one of the protagonists, is Henrietta Portano, who at the time was the acting assistant director in the Children's Services Department, a very senior important role to which she has since been appointed permanently. She was, for most of the evening, standing behind the semicircle where the councillors were all sitting, and they were sitting facing the two care leavers. And Omataro and Josh Harsant were at the side of the two care leavers. So you've got the semicircle of councillors, the two care leavers and the and Omataro between them, and behind them, Henrietta and her assistant. On the 18th of April, Henrietta Quartano made a complaint about four councillors who attended the training session on the 15th. The small part of the complaint which relates to Anne-Marie comes at the end of a short list. Now, there's a short list here that was in the original complaint. Um, I won't mention any names, obviously, but I will just, if it, if it helps the panel, just say that it wasn't just Anne-Marie that she was complaining about. So, she complained about people criticizing the way in which statements have been phrased by the young people, intellectualizing a contradiction between this would have been good enough for your own child, etc. Sighing, a lot of looking at watches, making wind up gestures during the course of the hearing, criticizing the quality of snacks, etc. Anne Marie, sorry, Henrietta made a complaint. And what she said was in April 2019 that Anne Marie was speaking in a, in a dismissive way to non care lever facilitators in the plural, telling us to pipe down. So that's what she said on the, in, in April, 18th of April. Three and a half months later, her memory is perhaps a little clearer. I don't know, but it's slightly different. She tells the investigator, Anne-Marie Cousins told me to pipe down. And she also said something like, that's enough, you can pipe down. So here we've got our first subtle change in the accounts, which you can see in your documents. The second character in this drama, the second protagonist, if you like, is Anne-Marie herself. At the time, she was a relatively new counsellor and she had a very different experience of the training session on the 15th of April, 2019. In her evidence about the session, she was very interested in attending the session. She was, she'd been a professional parent for a number of years. She made a positive move to attend that session when her session was cancelled. You'll notice in some emails at the end of the bundle, there were the suggestions that some had to be cajoled to attend, not Anne-Marie. She said at the, at the training session that they discussed and they debated. And it seemed that the young people did not feel threatened by any of this activity. She thought the course went well. 
there was controversy about the council, council tax issue, and there was quite a lot of discussion about that, as you can see in the testimonies. And some young people seem to be upset by that. In her evidence, Anne-Marie says that when Henrietta Cortano and Councillor Highland were debating education, someone said, let's get on with the training, let's focus on the training. Again, Anne-Marie in her, in her evidence said, she at one point got confused. There were three people standing at the front and she thought they were all care leavers, um, but one of them was a facilitator and she made a little joke. It's at paragraph 160 of, of the report and people laughed. Then, when the training was finished, she stayed on to chat. She certainly wasn't one of those who rushed off and didn't want to be there. She says she congratulated the young people and spoke to Henrietta Cortano. It's interesting that Henrietta Cortano, in her uh, testimony, describes this as unsolicited feedback in a, in a quite negative way. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit puzzled by that. And when Henrietta um, Quartano and Councillor Cousins were talking, they were observed by Councillor Williams. And she said in her testimony, there was nothing to suggest that there was any problem between Anne-Marie Cousins and Henrietta Quartano. In fact, she said they were laughing. Councillor Cousins discussed following up the training with Henrietta Quartano and arranged to come and sit in on some of the sessions that she was interested in. And she also followed it up by trying to implement, as she says in her testimony, that, that she had been taught during the training session in her role on the scrutiny panel for children and young people. Then the next day, Anne-Marie was taken into the leader's office and told that she had accused, that she had said to Henrietta Quartana that she should pipe down the previous evening. She was shocked. She is shocked by that. She said she certainly didn't say it. And she asked, what exactly was I supposed to have said? That, that's not my vocabulary. That's not my phraseology. She's a magistrate, you see, and she's very used to analyzing evidence. So she was, she was saying, I didn't say that. What did I say? At what point did I say it? And asked if she could speak to the officer or the young people to find out exactly what the problem was. But she was told quite clearly that she was not to do that. There is an interesting sequence of events that I want to set out to you that introduces the idea of where did the phrase, which is a very strange phrase, where did the phrase pipe down come from? Where did it appear in the first place? Um, as some of the councillors there said, um, the training was at 6.30 that night, lasted, I'm not quite sure how long it lasted, it's very difficult to find out, until about nine o'clock on the 15th of April. There were positive feedbacks during and after the session. Then, as uh, Simon Gulcher referred, at 9.48 the very next morning, on the 16th of April, Omatara, now if you want to turn to your uh, bundle, it's right near the back. It's at SG18. Um, unfortunately, the, the bundles are not paginated on, uh, unless yours are, mine isn't. Um, at the back, on the 16th of April, which is the day after the training session, we've got an email from Omatara. I'm sorry, I'm not going to try and pronounce her surname. I don't want to, to attempt it. Omatara is a lovely name, so I'm just gonna use that one. Um, now, this email at 9.48 in the morning is, in my view, it's obvious, it's an answer to something. So she says, hi, Josh, I think there were a few things that they raised and I noticed from my perspective. So I think there were a few things. That sounds like she's been asked a question. So this is nine o'clock the next morning. Um, and in paragraph three, you will see, she says, the comment at the end suggested that there should be no input from Henrietta or you because the trio worked better that the other two were piping up all the time. I explained it was necessary, etc. So the next morning we've got, we haven't got piped down, we've got piping up. So, and that 
um, Sam Gotcher has referred to very near contempor contemporaneous evidence. Um, and it's because it's the next morning, but it, this does not say that Councillor Cousins said pipe down. It says she said piped up. That's the word emerges. And in that email from Amatara, there's, there seems to be a fragment of possible conflict there. You can have a look at it yourself and, and make your own decisions. But it, it seems like um, there's a suggestion that there might be a conflict. And it looks to me as if um, maybe Henrietta's name is redacted. I, I don't know, but it's it, 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 looks, it looks like that may well be because it refers to somebody uh, Anne Marie did not agree and shunned somebody and possibly hoppled. Okay. So that's nine o'clock in the morning after the hearing. Now, I want to now refer to the email uh, from the leader. I don't know whether you will allow me to do that or not, but in the email, it refers to pipe down. Chair, I, th I think, I think it, you know, given that the email has not been admitted, uh, I think, again, we would need to advise the committee to go into private session and, and firstly discuss the relevance of the email and whether it should be admitted uh, and, and whether obviously, uh, if it is, the evidence should be considered on it in private session. Nigel, you had a point to make there too. Uh, I'm just going to clarify which email um, is being referred to because there, there, there was an email at 6.30 which is included in the bundle, I believe. One at midday at 1.38 that day. That was the email that was attached to Councillor Gardner's witness statement that okay. I okay. wasn't allowed to okay. submit, but I'd like you to consider it. So that we would then need to move into private session, John. That would be my advice, Chair, so that we could uh, hear from Frances as to her reasons why she considers it to be relevant and her arguments for it being admitted at this stage and obviously then hear other views. Sorry, before we can, can I clarify as well? Are we referring to the email, which is the um, 948 from Onatara? No, I'm referring oh. to the email at 1328 from the leader, which oh, was attached to David Gardner's witness statement. Oh, I see. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, John, to move into a private session, which you're recommending, do I simply ask the committee whether they are agreeable to moving into private session? Chair, if you could just use the, the words that uh, we used earlier this morning, uh, that, that, that uh, I, I can read them out if it helps. But yes, it would. I think in my, my papers has gotten scattered and I've lost track of this. So it's, 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 it's that the committee resolves pursuant to section 100 of the Local Government Act 1972, Local Government Access to Information Variation Order 2006. The public be excluded from the meeting on the grounds that this item may involve the disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph one, schedule 12 out of the act, that's information relating to any individual, and it's in the public interest to consider this section of the meeting in private. Thank you. Can I, can I say it doesn't actually refer to a, a private individual, it's, it's an email that was sent by the leader to Henrietta and uh, her boss and the chief executive and David Gardner, Angela Cornforth, and Linda Perks. It's, it was a. Um, it doesn't say private and confidential. So my advice to the committee, uh, Francis, and it goes back to something that uh, Simon Goetsch has said earlier, is uh, it, it involves somebody who is not a party to these proceedings. There's, there's been a request at an extremely late stage for this to be admitted. And there is no right of reply for that individual that sent that email. So the, the, the very representations as to whether it should be admitted should at the very least be considered in exempt session. Can, so, can, uh, can I just say that it's, um, it, it's an email from the leader to officers and councillors, and it doesn't say it's, it's private or confidential and th there's nothing to defend. It's just a simple email which 
which is, you know, four paragraphs, which I, I can't really see how controversial it is, quite frankly, but... I, um, no, I, I appreciate those views, Francis, and fully respect them, but my advice is still going to be to the committee okay. uh, to consider going into uh, exam session at this stage. Thank you. Committee members that vote, would you please indicate whether you are content that we- Can I just ask a quick question? I'm really sorry to be a nuisance. All right. Um, so when, when you had, uh, sorry, John, when, uh, before I've forgotten now, when you had David um, Gardner's witness statement, did the panel see it with its appendices or not? They did, Francis, yes. Okay, okay, thanks. I just, I can't, re I couldn't remember what had happened. Thank you. Yes, all right. Are the committee content that we move into um, exempt session? So shall we just come out? Content, uh... No, no, I think uh, all, all we need at this stage is if Naz can turn the YouTube off and then confirm it's switched off. Then obviously 